All right, so in this one, we're gonna be installing a third-party package called React Markdown. Uh, we're gonna play around with this just a little bit to show you an example of how you can use React Markdown in your app. Now, what Markdown is, is a type of syntax that you can use to render out HTML content without storing HTML content. So it's, it's often useful for blogs, but it's also useful for you know, writing out comments or if you wanna have code in there, it's also just a shorthand for writing out HTML itself. So Markdown is pretty useful and this render Markdown component uh, makes it even easier and useful inside of React. So that's what we're gonna be doing in this one. Um, we're not actually gonna cover all of this. Their, their documentation is really, really good. I wanted to actually bring attention to it so you use it more often. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and look at their GitHub here and we'll just do a quick npm install for this. And while that's installing, I'm gonna go ahead and grab much of this basic usage component into my example component, which is just a simple one altogether. I'll go ahead and paste this in here. And what I see is this uh, React Markdown, require React Markdown. Well, um, oftentimes you'll see stuff like that for React code. You can just do import React Markdown from React Markdown. Uh, that will give you the same results. These are sort of older syntax that you can use still, but it's just not necessary. Um, the next thing is I'm gonna use this constant for this input, whatever this input text is. This is what markdown text looks like. I'll show you a few others in just a moment. And then finally, we would render out or return the actual markdown component itself. Um, okay, so I get rid of all that. And Let's get rid of that comma as well. So what this is gonna do is just render this out into HTML. So if we save this and I run npm run start, we can look at an example because I have this component actually showing up in app.js. So I have this rendered ready and we look back in here and we see, and this is a paragraph. This is a header and this is a paragraph. So we can use all sorts of things inside of Markdown, right? So I can use a link as well. So a link is just using these brackets around what you wanna link and then your link, you know, something like joincfe.com slash YouTube where you'll find this video, right? So we save that and we go back in and this links it just like that. Um, so it does convert it into actual HTML content. Right, so that is something that's cool about it. So if I inspect the element here, you don't see those curly brackets. Instead, what you see is an H1, you see some other stuff. So um, learning about React might be something that's pretty useful, or excuse me, learning about Markdown will probably be something useful for this component itself, but that's all it is. It's just rendering out Markdown. So there are extra things that you can do for this component. But like many things, you might end up using your own component wrapped around this subcomponent because you might wanna change various parts. Like what if we changed our input to have you know an H1 tag saying hello world and that's actual HTML. So we have HTML inside this markdown and we wanna take a look at it. And what, what happens is it actually breaks a lot of things. So I can go ahead and put it into a new line or a couple new lines and that should bring the header back down and back rendering, but the HTML is still being escaped. So there's a parameter, an option that we can add on here that says escape HTML and we can say false. If I say false, my HTML is now rendering. It's now showing up. So what this means is that this is actually unsafe, right? So this is a problem if you have this user generated content and you're wanting to use Markdown, you're gonna probably wanna keep that to being true. And further, you can go one step further and have something called disallowed types. So the things that you actually don't want on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that altogether. And we'll just go ahead and say const uh, disallowed. And what are the things that we don't want allowed to be rendered inside of Markdown? Um, so we have the node types. If we look at this, this is what it's referring to. So if you don't want links rendered, for example, we put this in as a disallowed item and we save that and we refresh in here, the link is gone. It's completely rendered gone. It's rendered useless. So this is also very useful for if you had comments and you just didn't want any links to be in there. 
So what if I tried an actual, just a URL itself? Would that be gone? We save it and what do you know? That is also gone, right? So getting rid of that and just keeping it in as an empty array, the H1 is still removed, but all the links are back, right? So you can try around with all of these different node images or, uh, or sorry, you can use the node type image if you wanna remove images, but all these node types are, are various things that you might end up wanting to not render because Markdown will do it by default with that exception of the HTML. So a lot of Markdown plugins will automatically render the HTML. Um, there's a few other things that you could go about in here, making sure that those things work, such as even setting a class name for the general container element of the Markdown. So if you have things related to your Markdown that you wanna change, that would be a way to do it inside of there. Um, so that's pretty cool. I mean, Markdown is a very useful feature. It's something that I use all the time for blog posts, for comments, um, and then for chat even. It's just a very useful component. And then having your own custom component that renders that data is really, really important. So I'm gonna make this one step further, and that is we're gonna go ahead and do const input being equal to this.props and get rid of the original one by just cutting it out. And we'll bring this into our app.js and then input equals to the input. And this is actually much closer to what I would end up doing. So let's say for instance, I wanted images to be disallowed here, right? Going back into the, no, no, the type, it's actually image. So let's just get rid of image. Um, link reference, maybe we get rid of that as well, or just image reference. Again, a lot of things that you might play around with, but now it's a reuser com reusable component that I have that's default for everything that I have, um, including maybe you say class name and we say CFE markdown and that's another thing that you might end up having in there. So if you inspect your element, you see that CFE Markdown is in there. Everything underneath it is now contained inside of that Markdown component. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get everything. We're gonna be doing a lot more React. Com Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to get everything. We're gonna be doing a lot more React JS on our YouTube channel. So if you subscribe, you'll get to know exactly when we release those new items. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.